ndugu watu wa kwale kwanza nataka ni wapongeze wananchi wa kwale na wananchi wa taifa letu tunayoipenda Kenya kwa kutukaribisha katika sherehe hii ya mashujaa 2024 hapa kwale nataka ni mpongeze viongozi wote waliofika hapa nataka ni mpongeze pia ama ni wapongeze pia viongozi wote wa kwale hii wakiongozwa na mama governor Fatuma Achane kama kungekuwa na taswishi yoyote kwamba mama muislamu anaweza kuwa kiongozi na awe governor sasa hiyo taswishi imeondoka kwa sababu Fatuma Achane ni governor wetu wa hapa kwale We can now confirm without a doubt that women leadership has a firm place in the Republic of Kenya. Pia leo asubuhi tumekuwa na jambo la kihistoria tena. Kwa mara ya kwanza katika taifa letu mwanajeshi mama kuongoza sherehe hii Luteni Kanali Faith Mwangandi huyo mama hapo mpigie makofi jameni kudhihirisha tena kwamba mama wanaweza kufanya kazi zote and that is why we The people of Kenya are proud defenders of our freedom and aspire to become and remain free and sovereign. These were the foremost attributes of the first generation of freedom fighters who faced the monster of imperial domination with unflinching courage and commitment to prevail even if it cost them everything including their very lives. From them we have a fine model that has inspired generations of selfless patriots and continues to inspire us today as we do our part in nation building. From them we have learned that to be free we must be united as one family that draws its strength from the unique contribution of its diverse members and that we must see each other as equals treat each other justly and leave no one behind we the people of Kenya know that just like our ancestors we have what it takes including the values principles and commitments that define ushuja to break free of oppression, humiliation, poverty and indignity. We know this because for our nation to be free, brave men and women, young and old from every community and every region struggled with exemplary determination until Kenya was free. We know this because everywhere you go in Kenya the echoes of heroism histories of sacrifice and legacies of historic struggle by ordinary people who achieved extraordinarily and do to date our heroes did not hail from one village or speak one language our heroes are numerous and diverse united by a principled commitment to confront an unjust exclusive and oppressive system in pursuit of a noble vision of national liberation this unity of purpose motivated the icon of courage mekatilili wamwenza and her generation of champions 
from every part of Kenya to resist colonialism, as well as Ronald Gala and his fellow freedom fighters who advocated independence and decentralized government, which was an early fashion of devolution. In confronting colonialism, Mekatilili Wamenza did not seek to free her village or region from occupation by a community. Instead, she resisted the structures and institutions of a system of exploitation and tyranny in the knowledge that defeating it would free a whole nation. This is the same spirit embraced by our freedom fighters, such as Otenyo Nyamantere and Mora Ngiti from Kisi, Wanameme Masinde in Bungoma, Oigo Paul Agwech and Oyuko Fipi Ambio in Kisumu, Igogi Teresa Kiambi in Meru, Kalondu Matheka Mbalu in Makweni, and many others. The great lesson that has been passed down to us from their era and which we must faithfully transmit clearly and boldly to the future generations is that every citizen of Kenya is a full and equal member of our political community entitled to make a contribution to nation building and with an inalienable right to a full, just, and fair share of all the benefits that accrue from our development. No proposition to discriminate or to unjustly diminish one while enlarging another's right is admissible anywhere. Therefore, any formula seeking to exclude, alienate, or disenfranchise any person group of community for any reason is repugnant to the very essence of our nationhood. We are one people and Kenya is one united, indivisible and sovereign nation. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, freedom came at great cost and was won against overwhelming odds. It called for a capacity to embrace immense sacrifice and willingness to pay the ultimate price. We remember them and appreciate their sacrifices. We recognize their achievements and acknowledge that the nation we have today, with its past history and future prospects, is a legacy of their work, commitment, and life. Every day, the Constitution commands us to honor our freedom fighters who struggled heroically to bring freedom and justice to our land by living up to the spirit of Ushuja in the way we relate with one another, pursue our vocations, and build our nation. Article 10 of the Constitution shows us how to be Mashuja in our own way, day by day, every day. The freedom fighters were inspired by enduring universal principles and values which have transcended generations and live with us today. Unity, sharing, integrity, courage, determination and patriotism are our sources of strength in the face of difficulty, risk and danger. The struggle for freedom is the overwhelming and everlasting mission of humanity because in freedom lies the opportunity to achieve peace and democracy, health and wealth, justice and dignity, equality and inclusion, as well as unity in the pursuit of prosperity individually and collectively. Freedom is the key that opens the door to sustainable progress in every sector. That is why today we are a modern, competitive economy and a devolved democratic society. Our freedom has allowed us the space to grow and perfect our nationhood 
sustaining the spirit of freedom to evolve from the monopoly of liberation movement into a dynamic, pluralistic society where competition makes us stronger. Since the ultimate goal of freedom is sustainable development, the heroic struggle of our time must focus on achieving this through inclusive growth. The Ushuja of our era calls for urgent mobilization. The dedication we bring to these tasks will determine how well we uphold the legacy of Mekadilili, Wamenza, and other freedom fighters. This fact is abundantly clear to us. The persistent unemployment, severe poverty, increasing inequality, and general growth by increasing investments in infrastructure development, essential service delivery, and the productivity of key strategic sectors. The bottom-up economic transformation agenda is Kenya's economic freedom charter, which mobilizes unprecedented levels of investment into the most impactful sectors in providing essential public services inclusively and affordably multiplying incomes and creating millions of new good jobs for our many well-educated and highly skilled young people. The priority sectors identified as the strategic pillars of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda have enabled us to galvanize the national development agenda by mobilizing local and foreign investments, significantly improving the reach, efficiency, and impact of services and creating jobs at a sustained incremental rate. We are driving agricultural transformation through major interventions across all value chains, including fisheries and aqu aquaculture, horticulture and food crops, livestock, beekeeping, and rangeland development. Investments are being made to boost production and supply of quality inputs, provide extension services, reduce post-harvest losses, and maximize returns for producers. These efforts are aimed to increase economies of scale through aggregation, agro-processing, value addition, and exports. Let me announce to farmers across Kenya that we have just concluded the process of procuring the next consignments of fertilizer and assure them that the fertilizer that we have will continue to retail at 2,500 as we committed ourselves. Whether it is tea, whether it is coffee, whether it is maize, whether it is wheat, whether it is sugarcane, we will make sure that prices of fertilizer are universal because we have seen its impact on matters food productivity in Kenya and the lowering of the cost of living as a result of reduction of food prices because of enhanced supply. Citizens, in the digital economy, we have invested in developing digital and ICT hubs in all wards and expanding last mile fiber connectivity across the country, reaching areas previously considered remote and underserved. I must congratulate members of parliament across Kenya for being partners with us in this effort. And I want to encourage all our members of parliament to front load and to prioritize the construction of ICT hubs across Kenya so that we can give digital opportunities for our young people. Because these efforts have enabled young digital creators, entrepreneurs, and workers to access opportunities, not just locally, but also globally. We have also supported our Mamamboga, the border border operators, small-scale traders, construction workers, and others working in the informal and the hustler economy by investing in financial inclusion through accessible loans, capacity building, and regulatory reforms to facilitate their growth. I want to commend the banking industry for extending just last week 
an additional 150 billion in loans and loan facilities to micro, small, and medium enterprises to complement our efforts in making sure that we attend to the people lower in the category. To achieve universal health coverage, we have transformed the provision of health care to enable all Kenyans access promotive and preventive services in addition to curative services. First, under an all-inclusive social health framework and also through programs like Afia Bora Mashinani, which has onboarded over 100,000 community health promoters who provide health care directly to people in their homes. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks the conclusion of Bomayangu Week, launched last Monday to celebrate the achievement of our affordable housing program. Throughout the week, we showcased significant progress in advancing this ambition, ambitious agenda, which aims to transform lives and livelihoods by providing affordable, decent homes for millions of Kenyans. On this Mashuja Day, we recognize key initiatives such as the Kenya Urban Resilience Project, the Kenya Informal Settlements Improvement Project, and the National Climate Resilience Program, otherwise known as Climate Works. Under our bottom-up economic transformation agenda, we are committed to striking a major blow for the freedom struggle of our time by eradicating the shame of hunger in the land of plenty, taking decisive measures to significantly reduce poverty, providing all Kenyans with high-quality health care and enhancing dignity, well-being, and standards of living for everyone. The affordable housing program is central to these efforts, with a target of delivering 200,000 homes annually to meet the growing demands of housing. This initiative aims to tackle the deficit that has left many Kenyans living in insecure, unsanitary, and poorly contracted dwellings, and also fostering the growth of sustainable communities and generating jobs and opportunities across many other sectors. We all know that the future is urban. 60% of our population, not just in Kenya, but globally, will be living in urban areas. That is not a choice we can make. That is what's going to happen. But we can make a choice as to what kind of living, what kind of settlements, these 60% of our citizens who will be living in urban areas, how they will live. Either they will live in slums or they will live in distant dwellings. It is our choice and the choice of our generation to make sure that when we undergo this process, which is inevitable, and we have communities that are urban, they will be living in decent livelihoods. The progress so far is remarkable. 124,000 housing units are at different stages of completion across 75 sites in 37 counties. These projects include homes also for the military police. I am happy that the students have participated in designing student accommodation. And congratulations to the students who came, the 60 of you, who have participated in that process. Here in Kwale County, I am also happy that the Matuga Affordable Housing Project is underway, creating daily employment for over 200 workers. Similarly, the Diani White House Project is under construction and is also generating more jobs and more opportunities. Bomayangu, a key platform in the program exemplifies our commitment to economic empowerment and improving Kenya's quality of life. This online portal aggregates housing demand with over 547 registered users, of whom 52,000 have collected, have collectively saved 
more than 2.3 billion towards home ownership. These numbers represent real individuals striving to achieve their home ownership dreams. For example, Joseph Cairo from Ruiru, who began saving on Bomayangu Hasa and has now accumulated an impressive 895,000, more than half the cost of a one-bedroom unit. Similarly, Jemima Nyaboke, a businesswoman living with disability in Nairobi, has saved 650,000 steadily and surely bringing herself closer to home ownership. Jane Mumbi Mushina, a widow and a mother of two from Nakuru, will soon move from her rented unit, which costs 1,500 monthly, to her own one-bedroom home after patiently and with determination saving for it. <laughs> Likewise, David Gagiri, a 44-year-old Juakali artisan and a father of four, is rearing and nearing the completion of his savings to move into his own house. These stories illustrate how the, offer, how the affordable housing program is empowering ordinary citizens, affirming their dignity and opening pathways for financial independence. In December this year, just a few months from now, we will achieve a major milestone by handing over 1,080 new studio units at the Mukuru Meteorological Site in Nairobi with mortgages priced at 3,200 per month. This is to citizens who today pay the same amount but live in a slum rent that does not qualify them to own the dwelling finally. The revolutionary dimension of this milestone is that finally mortgages will no longer be the vocabulary of a lucky few, but an accessible, feasible, and convenient instrument of bottom-up empowerment, making home ownership affordable and therefore attainable. The program's benefits extend beyond housing. So far, the affordable housing program has created over 160,000 jobs throughout the housing value chain. While the industry remains predominantly male, we are working to increase female participation to 30%, up from the current 20%. Our collaboration with the Juakali sector has demonstrated the affordable housing program's significant potential to transform local manufacturing. In Kuala, over 200, over 200 artisans are providing essential services at various sites, fabricating components such as doors, windows, and cabinet fittings. The success of involving worker cooperatives and artisans has strengthened our commitment to support local businesses. You heard the governor of Kuala enumerate the number of companies that now work with us. To facilitate this further, the government has allocated Kenya shillings 4.4 billion, specifically for payments to MSMEs supplying goods and services under this program. I was especially proud to witness the signing of the 720 million subcontract awarded to Soweto High Rise Fabricators and Woodworkers Association in Kibra, just the event that you saw us here this morning. This partnership will greatly enhance the business prospects of these Juakali associations now recognized as bona fide affordable housing program suppliers. Ladies and gentlemen, on this day, it is important for us to remember that the objective of the freedom struggle was for the citizens of Kenya to have full rights and opportunities to live in dignity and achieve a high standard of living with security, 
health, and wealth. As we implement affordable housing program, therefore, we must at the same time move quickly to complement it with initiatives that promote health and well-being for veterans.